a marriage like mom and dad. Because they could see that we loved each other and that we were committed. It didn't, rem- it didn't mean that they never seen us have a conflict. I still remember Audrey was only five, maybe four or five. <laughs> Lily, she, she was really gracious. You know, when it comes to being, <laughs> being a beautiful wife, <laughs> she did a far better job of being a godly wife than I would a godly husband at times. It gave me a lot of grace. But um, Because whenever we would have a problem, you know, in our area, probably the biggest area of contention is if one of our vehicles got stuck and all I needed her to do, you know, was pull me out or something, or because I wasn't sure she knew how to pull me out, I would usually be doing the pulling, which wasn't always gracious. But she would always go along with it. But one time we were, we were the, the little truck needed to be towed. And so I was on the tractor. And it was in a hurry. We had to go somewhere. We had an appointment. And so I, I had hooked. And we had a VAC case. And nobody knows what those are probably. Except these old guys, Edgar Wood. VAC case. But it, and it was a narrow front end. And it had a cast iron kind of front grill thing. And there was really no place to put a chain except you could latch it in that cast iron thing. I was just pulling it a little ways. It wasn't, so I just had latched it there in the the cast iron part of the tractor and was pulling her and I was pulling backwards and she, because we just had a little ways to go to get it out so we could pull it with the other truck. And so I was doing that. But every time I would just pull her a little bit, the chain would fall off. And I think she could see I was getting frustrated. This chain wasn't staying on it anyway. And I was jumping back on and off the chair. So the next time, that, about the third time or fourth time it slipped, she gets out and she finds a better place to hook it. And I didn't notice, but she hooked it right in the grill. <laughs> and so I back up and sure enough, the bottom of the grill comes out like this. And it pulls the radiator right into the fan. <laughs> And I'm sitting behind the fan. And so I am just, and here I was dressed because we were ready to go. Some, and I'm doused with antifreeze. And, <laughs> and it was a borrowed tractor. And now I knew I had a radiator to fix. And I was really not thinking a lot of love thoughts. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. I was so proud of myself. Because I was wet and dripping and went in the house and was changing. But my little girl, she comes running in. She's watching all this. And Audrey says, Daddy, do you still love Mommy? <laughs> well, we don't always have to say words. It's our face that <laughs> <laughs> She must have been reading something. Anyway, I assured her that I loved her. I said, yes, Daddy still loves Mommy. Now, those things like that happen. But you know, there's something that carries through, whether it's minor or big, and it's letting your marriage be a witness. Because marriage is something really beautiful and sacred. It's, that's a plan of God. Now, we, we've done it in different ways, in marriages, and we have different ceremonies and different cultures. But marriage itself is a plan of God by his design. And so now, how are we going to let our marriage shine? I, I would like us, we were, we were with um, Steve and Jake at an overcomers course, and it was just a, a beautiful time for, for living. We watched, I really believe, lives change and marriages shift and things in the spirit realm and, and fathers and sons. It was a, it was a beautiful time. Somehow I, I cried a lot, just with others, sometimes reflecting on God's goodness, other times just giving things to him that maybe I was carrying. And there's times like that. And one of the songs they played, Jake is an anointed 
song chooser, I think, and he's always playing these songs during the services. And anyway, so this song, we're going to play it. But it was written, I believe, according to what I understand, it was written by uh, Amanda Esch, and she was the main singer, Dan and Amanda, and they sing this. And so, I, as an amen, God knew I needed you. <laughs> I'd like you to look over at your partner. If you're married to me, just say, God knew I needed you. Can you tell her that? <laughs> God knew I needed you. Yes, amen. You know, there's something about that that I, I, I felt that was beautifully written. And I loved how this gal, Amanda, um, went back to the, even the beginning of creation. Because, you know, the truth is, God knew her then. It says he knew you. And in fact, it says that in, in Ephesians. So let your marriage shine here. Let's, uh, blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us. Let's read that with all together. Blessed, that the highlighted part, part, blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let's read that together. Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. See, that's the heart of God to every one of us. In fact, he knew us. It says, just, read that first sentence there, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Let's pause it there. Just as he chose us. See, in her song, she talks about that. She talks about when God was forming the, the stars and when he first created the moon and the stars and placed them in the sky. And then she goes on with this little phrase about creating, and says, and then God knew I needed you. See, God knew us. God knew you, Dennis, when you were a little boy. Before that, he knew you before you were created, before you were born, before the foundation of the world, it says. How many years ago do you think that might have been? That's a long time ago. If we look at even this scripturally, when the foundation, at least we see there, is maybe 6,000 some years. But before that, so he knew you, and he knew you. I believe there's something beautiful, even asking God. Especially because, see, when we come through life, sometimes we pick up hurts. Well, we do. It's why Jesus came. In Isaiah 61, it says he came to heal those with broken hearts. And then Jesus read that passage. It's recorded in Luke chapter 4. And Jesus was at Nazareth. And he was saying, he finds a place where it was written, and he reads how he was come to heal broken hearts and set captives free. That's all of us. You know, here's Sharon when she was a little girl. And Dennis is a little boy. Now, those pictures aren't as clear as they could. I think they had a snapshot in Dennis. I think I got that about one this morning. <laughs> and um, anyway, that was good. And uh, they took a picture of it and sent it. So it's not as clear as it could be. But, you know, the truth is, God knew you then. And, and he knew Dennis. And God, before time, knew both of you. Now, he's the one that I really believe had his hand in, in your lives and in your marriage. And so, today we just want to bless you guys. You know, Sharon, I was blessed with your story, and I see you have a, a brother here, and I'm not sure, is there some more siblings here, or just a brother? Yeah. We welcome you. But um, I know your, your circumstances were... We're unique, and he, your brother just told me he had spent some time in an orphanage, and, and I know you were in a foster care with the Weavers, I believe, and, and um, you know, God knew you then. In fact, I believe there's a special anointing on you because of that, and you as well. We, we have two that were born to us and two we adopted, and I believe that our adopted children, I still believe this, have kind of a special anointing because, see, God says this, he says he's a father. For whatever reason, if your fathers are not able to be the father that maybe they would even like to be, for whatever reason they're not in the picture, I see God in a, in a very gracious way. He steps in 
And he says, I'm a father to the fatherless. Or maybe our own fathers, maybe missed it, not wanting to, but maybe somehow. But he says, he's a father to the fatherless. And then it says, he's a defender of the widows. God is God in his holy dwelling. Throughout the Old Testament, he would give special instruction for his people to watch out and care for the orphans, for the ones that he had, a, he had a, there was a special anointing. I also believe there's special, probably sensitivities, maybe even some wounds that come with that journey, but there's a special anointing. So we just want to bless you, and I thank you, Sharon, and I bless you, your brother as well. Harry, I believe, is that right? But um, grateful for God's touch. See, God sets the lonely in families, leads them forth. And then he leads forth the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. That's in Psalm. Now, just as he chose us in him. What an amazing truth. Because see, it says he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Notice what it says then. That we should be without blame before him in love. And then having predestined us to adoption. See, all of us are adopted. We really are adopted into the family of God. And there's something beautiful about adoption. And about somebody stepping in. Now, whether it's in, I know when we did that, went through the court, our children were 11 and 12. And so they had went through some difficult things before then. But when that went through, and I, I was amazed that we got new birth certificates. It says, and, and it comes from Elkhart County. And the record of birth says parents, Robert and Lily Riggsecker. Huh. See, when we become part of the family of God, there's a whole new birth certificate. <laughs> We've been born again. Something changes. It's kingdom now instead of world. It's what gives you the grace that your marriage can shine before men. And they say, wow, they went through a lot. But look at that. They're in love. And I see that. I see your attentiveness to Sharon and her grace and you guys together. Even when it's difficult, you're, you're you need to load a card. I never see you complain. I just want to bless you. And you minister in so many beautiful ways. You've touched so many families. And so today it's just a blessing to honor you, Dennis and Sharon. And, and we thank you. And, and your children can know they are, they're blessed with, with you as dad and mom because of the grace of God. He chose you. And you're a witness. See, this thing of adoption, we haven't received the spirit of bondage to fear, but we received the spirit of adoption. We're adopted into his family. There's something so powerful about that. Uh, that, that truth, and if we can understand who we are, <laughs> who I really am in Christ, and he gives us, he places his spirit as perfect within us, and the spirit of Christ in us gives us the grace to live in the soul part of our being in victory. He brings healing in the soul part of our being. And even that, it continues to even be manifested in our bodies. I really believe that. I know that there, you guys experienced healing. Dennis was just telling me today, he said, God touched him. He'd just been praying about some physical needs and God healed him. Felt he gave him strength and his doctor was, was blessed as well. That's beautiful. And I really believe that's the, out of what Christ did on the cross and that spirit of, of wholeness within us as it continues to permeate our, our being. We're adopted. And then we become salty, salt. We are the salt. <laughs> that's who we are. We are the light. You know, God created man. It says we're the light. Not, men don't light a candle. And so let our light shine. Let our marriages shine. Genesis. This text about marriage just a little. And it doesn't feel like you can hardly do a wedding vow renewal without at least giving a little portion of a wedding message. 
You know, when God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male, female created he them. This is male and female. Some believe that that word end wasn't I don't know, I, I didn't look the Hebrew up. Is there a word end in there or not? But it was more of the idea that God created man, male, female, like an angel. He wasn't male or he was both. Until we get to Genesis 2. I'm not making a doctrine out of this. I just believe that when God then breathed into man's nostrils a breath of life and he made God, a man in his image, which God is is both the attributes of male, female. And, and says, God formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils, a breath of life. Man became a living sore, living being. Then it goes on and said, it's not good that man's alone. Now he had created him in Genesis 1, Genesis 2. And so then it says, God uh, brought all the animals, every fowl of the air. He says, every beast of the field. He brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called them. Can you imagine the brilliance and the intellect of Adam? Man, <clears throat> well, that one right there, well, that's a zebra. Oh, that one, that's a hippopotamus. Oh, I like that, that's a giraffe. And so as little children, we start learning what Adam called the animals. How did he know? How did he know what a horse was? Oh, that would be a dog. Now that other thing over there, that's a cat. <laughs> okay, some people like cats. <laughs> we won't go into the cats and the dog thing. Or when there's an alligator or a crocodile, and you start naming all the birds. And then it says when he came to the end of that, whatever he called it, that was the name. And so Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the every beast of the field. And then it says there was not a helpmate for him. So then God caused Adam to fall asleep. And if I preach long enough, that'll be all of us. <laughs> no, I won't go that long. But God caused Adam to fall asleep. And then it says he removed the woman out of the man. I, I, I believe that's what happened. He just took the female out of the male, took woman out of man, and closed up the flesh. Took a, um, as he slept, he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh thereof, and it says, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, so shall she be called woman because she is taken out of man. And therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Beautiful picture. That was the first marriage that God ordained. It's, it's, the thing that's so beautiful, it was out of the side. They both have equal value. They are, but they're very distinct in difference. It's not like after another 10 years or so, you decide, oh, I think I'll be a woman kind of thing. Every part of our DNA will tell us if we're a male or a female because God removed the woman from the man. And so every cell of our being, no matter, even if they do these, whatever now they're referring to sex changes and those things, and I really believe it's, it's a confusion that's going on in God. But every cell, if there's a piece of, a fingernail or a, a piece of skin, so they can tell immediately this is a male, this is a female. It doesn't change even after they do the whatever changes they want to do. Surgically, it doesn't change who God created us to be. And so we can worship the Lord in that. Now it says a man will leave his father and mother, cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one. God created them, and he established marriage. And then this thing of marriage is, is amazing because 
now it talks about that in, in, in um, Ephesians. And the very first thing it says in this passage on marriage is submit one to another. Too many times my wife and I meet with a lot of couples and every now and then there'll be a man will want us to kind of focus on Ephesians 5 and make sure you kind of hit this thing pretty good, the submitting part. Friends, I just want to be really clear. Whenever somebody as a man even brings that up, there's a problem. They never read 21, submit to one another. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands and everything. There's an order and there's a beauty in God's established order. But if husbands can love their wife as Christ loved the church, I don't believe you'll find a woman anywhere that struggles with order. What does that look like? My wife hasn't always had the best example. I'd like to be. I'm growing. <laughs> Maybe some areas slow, but hopefully. But I, I love my wife, and I'd like to love her as Christ loved the church. See, that was an unconditional love. It was a love no matter what happened. It was loving even when she was unlovely. Because the church, he saved us in our sin. We're going to um, be going into your vows a little bit. And if you need to um, take care of some things, you can, you're excused. Um, I'm just going to continue to preach. Is that all right if I preach while you're gone, Sharon? You don't mind if I keep talking while you're gone? Yeah. Okay. We bless you. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ of the church and gave. And then it says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one. And then he says, this is a great mystery. And I'm speaking concerning Christ and the church. Here he was going through this thing, and so many times he well, yeah, yeah, that's husbands and wives. And he says, no, I'm speaking about Christ and the church. And there's a beautiful picture in marriage. That's why I think God's calling us, let our marriages so shine before men that they might see your marriage, your good marriage, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And so for this cause, a man leaves his mother and father. Well, let our marriage so shine that they may glorify our Father in heaven. Now, we're going to go into, when they come back, I'm going to be going into um, the vows. But I would love to... Uh, I believe Jeanette and Maya are going to be singing a song um, here, probably right after the vows that we have. And um, then we're going to go into, uh, I'm just seeing, I think Dell stopped a little early for worship time. <laughs> Dell, are you still here? Did he, uh, Dell, you are here. <laughs> Do you want to come up? And uh, you bring your team, is the team around? Could we do another couple of numbers? I just would love to worship, especially as they're coming back. If you could lead us in just uh, a couple of songs. And, uh, and then when they're back, we're going to do the vows. And, and following that, we're actually going to eat. Um, I had said I was going to have a little shorter message. My wife wasn't convinced, but <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> and everything went a little shorter. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, we'll, uh, we're going to let you guys uh, just lead us in this time. Let's do the song. Um, there we go. Let's do the song that we were learning this morning. Uh, it was Ruby Byler. I should put her on the spot that asked about that. Isn't it wonderful? Sin's forgiven. We've been set free. The finished work of the cross, right? Our hope is in Jesus. But the amazing thing is that he now is in us. Huh? Yeah. Consider that. My hope is in him, but even more amazing is that he is in me. Amen. What gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer? 
There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Isn't that beautiful? night is dark but I am not forsaken for by my side the Savior he will stay I labor on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need his power is displayed to this I hold my shepherd will Defend me through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. fate I dread I know I am forgiven yes the future sure the price it has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave amen to this I hold my sin has been defeated Jesus now and ever is my plea oh the chains are released I can see I am free at not I but through Christ in me Every breath I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home, and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold my hope is on. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, till my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, to this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore. Till my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. I'd love to have the team just stay right close. Um, 
we're going to lead you through the vows next. And then after the vows, um, Jeanette, I believe, and Maya are going to sing a song. And then following that song, we're going to have you guys start singing again. And, and while we're right here, I would love to just give opportunity for people that would like to greet you here. Just if we could kind of, that will be after um, Maya's song. Yeah, because we, uh, that way we have a little time and we don't need to be over there till at least uh, a little after 11.15. So oh, that way we can do some greeting. Is that all right? While the worship is happening. Okay. I'm going to have my wife come up and help me with this. I don't know if she's ever done this before. <laughs> this will be the first time she marries somebody. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need this mic here. Very good. And I'm going to ask you both a question. Since you're renewing your vows, we're we just simply will ask you, do you recognize that marriage is an ordinance of God and confirmed and sanctified by Jesus Christ and you must enter into it in the fear of God? And You've done that, but you can answer, we believe. Dennis, this is a time of renewing your vow. And so I don't know what those original ones were like, but I'm guessing they're similar. But at any rate, um, you can say, I, Dennis, take you, Sharon. I, Dennis, take you, Sharon. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I will love and cherish you. I will love and cherish you. I will provide and care for you. I will provide and care for you. In health. In health. And in sickness. And in sickness. In prosperity. In prosperity. And adversity. And adversity. I will exercise patience. Exercise patience, kindness, kindness, and forbearance towards you. And forbearance towards you. I will live in peace with you. I will live in peace with you. As a faithful Christian husband. As a faithful Christian husband. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. I will keep myself only unto you. I will keep myself only unto you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Mm -hmm. Say, I, Sharon. I, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Um, take you, Dennis. Take you, Dennis. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. I will cherish you. I will cherish you. And love you. Love you. In health and in sickness. In health and in sickness. In prosperity and adversity. Prosperity and adversity. adversity. I will share with you. I will share with you. The joys and sorrows of life. The joys and sorrows of life. Oh. And Exercise patience. Exercise patience. Kindness. Kindness. And forbearance. And forbearance. Toward you. Towards you. I will live with you in peace. I will live with you in peace. As a faithful Christian wife. A faithful Christian wife. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. And keep myself only unto you. And keep myself only unto you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. <laughs> Amen. Now, Dennis, as you and Sharon have renewed these vows before God and all these witnesses. I affirm that your husband and wife, in the name of the Lord, and the God may the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob bless you and continue to hold this marriage and what God has joined together that no one ever separate. Now, Dennis, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I guess we didn't talk about that, did we? But that's just usually that fits yeah, in right yeah. there. But that was nice. Oh, the the renew. Oh, the vow renewal papers. Okay. Well, yeah, I would gladly sign those at another time. Yeah. Is that all right? Okay. We're going to. Uh, I'd like to have a prayer just to bless you. Um, and I would love to just have a couple come up, uh, whoever would want to just <clears throat> stand and let's just um, lay hands on them and bless this uh, marriage. Any of the guys, elders, sisters, anybody that just wants to be part of this prayer, a blessing. And then um, if Jeanette and um, Maya would be ready to sing as soon as we're done with this prayer, 
we would like you to sing. <laughs> yeah, just got to make a circle around uh, Dennis and uh, Sharon. Amen. Father God, I thank you for this day. What a beautiful day. God, thank you that not only are you a father to the fatherless and a defender of the hurt, but God, you are our God who knew us before time and you chose us. And today, God, we celebrate with Dennis and Sharon. God, you've chosen them and you've blessed them. And we today just desire to, God, ask for your special covering <clears throat> and blessing. We want to bless Dennis and Sharon and their lives and their witness and the ministry that we see flowing out of their lives. Their gracious kindness, the giving of so much time and, and even resources and food and things to so many. God, may this marriage continue to be a witness. May it so shine before men that people would glorify their Father, which is in heaven. So we pray, God, a special blessing. In these days and years ahead, would you hold Dennis and Sharon, their children, grandchildren, Lord, maybe even great-grandchildren. But as time goes, Lord, would you just, would, they, would you hold them? And we pray a blessing, and we speak life and healing. We give you praise, and we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. You guys may be seated. We're going to uh, have the song, and then you can come up and greet in a special way. We'd like to rearrange you guys a little bit if you want to. Uh, if we're, I would say you'd be up front, and then everybody just files up here. So maybe you want to just back up. Yeah. Yeah, that would be perfect right there. In honor of Dennis and Sharon, they requested this song. So let's honor them as we sing this song. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us. Friends, we're going to um, just allow some time here. And I'd love to have you guys just continue to worship and lead. But I would like to uh, 
we'll just start in the back on this side if anybody would like and we'll just kind of work our way forward and and if you do you want to greet and then just be seated because we're going to have a, a closing prayer and a blessing on the food and then we're going to excuse uh, the Zimmerman family uh, first and the rest can follow so um, as they're worshiping uh, anybody uh, on this side if you want to just start making your way up and then just kind of go 